besides being a great way to manage your different papers, uh, besides being a great tool to help you understand how to do research and grammar and improve your writing and things like that, um, Pearson Writer has a really useful tool called Review. And this little video, I just want to give you an example of what it does and how it can help your writing and therefore hopefully help your grades. So I logged into Pearson Writer. I went to the review button here and I'm going to go down and browse. And um, let's see, I'm going to pick this. This is just going to be a sample paper that I'm going to look at by Sally Sea Lion. So this is just a sample child development paper. but right whatever paper you have do you could use so I've uh, loaded it and we can see it in this preview window and if you'll notice uh, up here these different buttons these are what I want to work my way through to help um, improve my paper I'm gonna go to the first uh, option here general analysis and it's you can see it says analyzing and it'll come back after several seconds with um, hopefully some useful tips and there you go. You can see if I just, without even looking over here on the left, uh, all these, the purple underlines, which are identifying, I'm guessing, uh, some potential issues in my paper. And you can see here, uh, I've got three options to look at. Correctness, style, and consistency. And under correctness, there's grammar and spelling. So let's start with what it, it gave us at the beginning, correctness and grammar, 30 issues. Now, not all of the issues, uh, this is just like spell check in Google Docs or in Word or any sort of word processing program. I can't just go through and accept everything without looking at it because um, this first example, it's, it's saying instead of the word the, maybe you want to put the word there. And here's where it is. But let's take a look. Um, after his car was stolen, when he was on the... So it's saying there. So on there was, well, the was on the was. Well, that doesn't make much sense. But if I kind of keep reading and I want to use my context clues, you know what I realize is instead of an S, this should be a Y. So on the way to, then the movie Silence of the Lambs. So in fact, the word the is correct, not there. It was the next word that was wrong. Uh, so this is just an example of why I don't want to simply go through and accept every um, issue that it identifies. So there was an issue with that sentence. It just wasn't the word it found. It was the next word. So I'm going to click the uh, little I here to hide that issue because I've already identified and fixed it. Uh, and if we just go through, okay, many different, um, let's see, Oscar. Sorry, the next one was Oscar. It says I'm missing a, common, a comma. Crash won a few Oscars, including, yep should do that so I'm just gonna click on it and it's gonna add the comma so if I go back up you can see it added the comma for me um, it, what I have here is many different storylines it's saying instead of many different just say many crash is that it has many storylines and I, yeah I kind of like that many different and many what's the you know what's the difference I think many is a more concise way of saying the same thing now here it identifies another issue which is something about the passive voice which is later on uh, so what we're gonna hit resolve and it will come back and look at that next thing um, here it's saying what I have is bigger and it's suggesting a bigger well let's see if that makes sense in my sentence you realize that they actually tie together to tell bigger story oh I definitely want to have it say a bigger story. So thank you for finding that, Pearson Writer. The black men notice one of the men. And yeah, I don't really need that comma there. Oh, it's giving me another issue, but I want to first resolve this one. Okay. Here and her. All right. Let's see. Anthony comments that she is a racist for being scared that two black men are walking by her. Well, I see what why it's suggesting here, but in this case, um, she, her, that makes sense, so I'm gonna hide that issue. 
okay so you can see th that's basically what it's what it's saying um, besides different words um, for example here it's saying I'm missing uh, punctuation well I think maybe the problem isn't the punctuation the problem is that I uh, let's see I don't even know if I can fix it I might need to fix it in my actual paper there we go so I've, I've fixed that issue and you can if you just look at these different potential types of issues verb agreement error missing possessive apostrophe missing comma verb agreement um, something about adverbs missing comma incorrect phrase so it's identifying and that's just under the correctness in general issues let's look at style so style is identifying passive voice you can see there's quite a few passive voice sentences um, passive voice isn't necessarily always bad or wrong in academic writing but uh, if you notice how much passive uh, sentences are in this that that's probably too much I'd want to go through and see if I could find a way to change many or maybe even most of those from passive to active voice and then consistency uh, project to project so it's identifying that here I've capitalized the word project and it's saying that down here I have a lowercase p for project well that's okay because it makes sense that it's a capital P in the title and lowercase just in my sentence so I don't need to change that all right so we just did the general analysis now let's look at structure it's analyzing again hopefully it won't take too much time one other thing I should sort of point out maybe I should have done this first um, you'll notice that up here in the preview window it says writing style and it says general and it's got the American flag for English well I could potentially I choose different languages but what I definitely can do is change from general to academic to be honest it's not gonna make a huge difference um, for many or maybe even most of the papers that you're writing for this class but it's not a bad idea I suppose to change it to academic it might help um, identify some some things so under the uh, grammatical structure it's not giving us necessarily lots and lots of things that we click on to change it's just identifying the structure of our sentences and our writing notice what it says here 70 percent of sentences start with a subject compared to 61 percent in published writing so it's just telling us that compared to the typical maybe academic writing or the writing that lots of people consume uh, which is about two-thirds roughly two-thirds uh, of the sentences beginning with the subject here I almost have a uh, one fourth no, three-fourths sorry I got my numbers wrong two-thirds versus three-fourths and it gives me those examples and if I scroll all the way down now it's saying 14 percent start with subordinate conjunction eight percent two percent and of those different types uh, here it's gonna tell me about word length um, right so it looks like most of my sentences have between 10 and 19 it's just telling us for our own information right I've got one sentence in there that has 40 to 49 words that's quite quite a long sentence uh, and identifies nine long sentences all right plagiarism this is probably for us in this class one of the most uh, useful parts of the Pearson writer review option it's going to go out and compare our writing to um, stuff that's online that it can find in different databases and different websites okay so now my plagiarism review has finished uh, the first thing I notice is the similarity score <laughs> 0.6 percent that's pretty good um, coming I'm, as an instructor saying 0.6 percent pretty low it says that one sentence matches a source and it identifies a Wikipedia article and it says crash is a 2004 American drama film co-written directed and produced by and so if I click on this I wonder if it'll bring yep, it'll bring me right here oh but this is a completely different completely different uh, movie so I'm assuming that this we didn't get this from from Wikipedia so it looks like as far as plagiarism is concerned uh, at least this example I have is not too bad ideally you would uh, see a number um, that would be lower than a hundred 
very typically though it'll be higher than um, 0.6 percent because you are expected in many uh, of your assignments to have direct quotes and so we would expect that if you're using direct quotes that a plagiarism checker would say hey these sent these words in this particular order shows up in this other source I mean we want that to happen because you're using a direct source we just want to make sure though that when you use those direct quotes and you put those words in that exact same order that you're citing it correctly that you're giving proper recognition to the folks who originally wrote and published that uh, those words all right next is paragraph readability eight issues found it says this paragraph is easy to read congratulations so it's using something called the flesh reading ease uh, index or score and uh, so that's really good easy to read congratulations 74 okay let's see so this just gives you an idea uh, I mean if that number were were different and said this is difficult to read you might want to think about how you can uh, reword that and finally we're going to the summary And now here's my summary report. Um, so this is a pretty thorough uh, summary. Uh, if I close this now, it brings us back to general analysis. If I wanted to go a little more deeper or spend time to go through each of those uh, identified things, I wanted to show you what each of these items in Pearson Writer review uh, could do for you. My hope is that you take advantage of it in your writing uh, before you submit your stuff. And the, you know, it's not just about getting a better grade, but by doing this and using this tool, hopefully you'll begin to start to identify issues before uh, or you know, as you're writing your next assignment, for example. All right, that's it for now. Thank you.